All right, and uh, next up we have Wrestle Kingdom 2, which is uh, a lot of the same. It kind of refined that Day of Reckoning system that we talked about in the earlier one, but expanded the roster uh, with some pretty cool American wrestlers like Dory Funk, Terry Funk, Stan Hansen, Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, fun game. Uh, it's uh, and by the way, Wrestle Kingdom 2. Wrestle Kingdom is actually like the Japanese WrestleMania today. It's a, it's a big event every January in the Tokyo Dome. So I, I believe there maybe was a mode. There was kind of like a road to Wrestle Kingdom mode in, in here. Uh, they fleshed out a little bit, but fun. An import game that wasn't fun was uh, this uh, Hokuto no Ken patchy slot game and. This is just basically a slot machine game with a story in each machine. Uh, I think there were maybe two machines in here that you could play. Yeah, so two machines, and basically as you won money, you sort of advanced and fought all the different characters in the Hukuro no Ken series. Uh, just average, but I got it for under $10, so an interesting curiosity for the collection. A really, really good import game is Itadaki Street Special, and I talked about this in my series retrospective for Itadaki Street. Itadaki Street is basically a really, really fun Monopoly type game, and the matches just last, you know, an hour, hour and a half, and your fortunes change with every roll of the die, but uh, in this case, it pitted Final Fantasy characters Again, Square Enix characters. And I think this was done right after the merger. Gorgeous art style, great orchestral score from both series. Uh, this is a terrific, terrific game to pick up. And you don't necessarily need to know Japanese to play it. I mean, you're going to have to research the rules of the game. You can do that by playing Fortune Street for the Nintendo Wii, which is this game, this style game, basically. Uh, in English, but there may even be an English patch floating around for this. It's not that easy to find, but very, very playable in Japanese once you know the rules. Next up, Fantasy Star Universe. I played this for about an hour, and not great. Uh, it's just kind of a bland sci-fi storyline. It wasn't bad. But I'm not sure that I'll go back to it, but, you know, again, under 10 bucks, it was fun. Cold Winter. This game, I don't know, I, there was a point out on the PS2 where, maybe, maybe it was around 2004, 2005, like right before the release of the new, at that time, new systems, where like, I wanted FPS games. And this was supposed to be a really good one. It, it's okay, it, it, it couldn't hold up to anything that was on the Xbox, the X, original Xbox. Um, just, again, kind of average. A really, really cool game is Mega Man. This was, uh, I said I hadn't played the Mega Man X collection. I play, I've i played the heck out of this. I am so bad at Mega Man. It is so challenging, but it's fun to have all of the games included in here. And I think there are even, even like, there's a bonus uh, game. It may be the Mega Man Arcade Fighter. But just to have all of the Mega Man games in one place plays really, really well. Uh, this is a terrific, terrific pickup. And it's, uh, it's still floating around out there on eBay, maybe even on Amazon. I want to say I got this on Amazon like a year and a half ago. So check it out if you love Mega Man or if you haven't played the series and you want to discover it for the first time. This is a great way to go. NHL 06. Um... I'm just showing this one because it has a kind of a special place in my heart. Uh, good, good buddy of mine's a big hockey fan. And boy, when this came out, we played this to the exclusion of any other game. I mean, we devoted so much time to, to this game, and he would always beat me. And I told him, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice. I'm going to practice on this game every night. And, you know, I am going, I'm, I'm going to beat you once. I mean, this guy's just great at NHL. So I practiced for a month, two months. He actually makes the joke like I, I you know, like I, I stopped. Uh, I was at that point, I was like applying to grad school and stuff. And I like put off my future plans to beat him. That's not true. But I, I did practice enough to get pretty good. 
and I absolutely annihilated him. Uh, I think it was like, I was a Czech Republic, he was Canada, and I, I destroyed him, and it was the only, <laughs> well, it's not the only time I've beaten him in this game, but one of the few times. So just a lot of fun memories with this. And Dragon Quest VIII, uh, one of the best RPGs on the system. Gorgeous, gorgeous visual style. You definitely have to uh, have to play this if you have a PS2. This is a sealed box version with, I guess, a playable demo of Final Fantasy XII. Uh, I, I, I had a loose version back in the day, but I wanted the box version. Uh, just a, a wonderful game. Devil Summoner. This is the first Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner game. Sealed, haven't got a chance to play it. There's so many Shin Megami Tensei games, and I wanted them all for the PS2, but I'm, you know, I just got stuck. I played Persona 3 for countless hours, played half of Persona 4, and just haven't gotten around to these other games. But if you've played this, let me know. I also have this, the second one, Devil, Devil Summoner 2. And that's unopened too, and it was that limited edition with the Jack Frost style. So someday maybe, but I'll leave these sealed for now. All Star Pro Wrestling 2. This was actually put out by Squaresoft. It's kind of strange that they were putting out wrestling games. It's average. Um, nothing really remarkable to say about this game. Other than that, it had a good roster, and it was pretty early on for the system, I think. And it was still like a CD-based game. But that didn't last. Square Enix got out of the wrestling game business. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I actually liked this uh, type of game. I don't know what you would call it. It was kind of like the, the dungeon crawler RPG in the Marvel Universe. X-Men Legends 2 was also really, really good. This was just kind of an extension of that. It's, um, I, I probably haven't played, I didn't really play through this, I uh, probably got, I eh, probably put about five or six hours into it, but, you know, definitely not bad. Alright, let's see, ah, World Rally Championship. This was actually a really, really cool racing game. You could play all of the rally circuits, and there was just something about this I, I, I don't know, I'm not a, a huge racing fan, but at the time, the graphics were very, very good. It was challenging, and it was just straight rallying. It was, you know, I guess I think they wanted to call them splits, you know, just racing split for split, trying to get the best time per track, and just playing through the whole season. Today it looks a little bit dated, but boy, when I picked this up, whenever this came out, 2000. This was actually 2000, was this 2001 it says, so this was really, really early. I got this maybe 2004, 2005, and it was, it was just a lot of fun. Recommend it if you can find it. And another actual classic that came out very, very late in the life of the PS2, 2007, I remember being really hyped about this game. Fire Pro Wrestling Returns, the first Fire Pro game in English. And if you don't know what, I have to do a couple videos on this series because it is a very, very unique wrestling series. Uh, basically 2D isometric view wrestling game. But the thing here is that the roster is extensive. Now, it, the, the roster that it came with was just okay takeoffs of American based or American pro wrestlers and some Japanese based wrestlers or Japan based wrestlers. but. What you could do was go online, there was like a, a Fire Pro Wrestling forum, and at the time, the PS3 had just come out, and what you could actually do was people would put together rosters, and they'd put them, I guess, in PS2 memory card files that you could load up on the PS3, and then transfer back, if you had that little dongle, you could transfer it back to your PS2 memory card, and so they filled like all 850 roster slots, and as a result, this game had the most tremendous roster from all eras of wrestling, MMA, and what was cool was the, the logic that you could program these wrestlers with was just so deep. You know, people who actually created, say, oh, I, I don't even know, you know, you could create, you know, any wrestler you could think of 
with his moveset, his finishers, his taunts, his even down to his reaction to fatigue and, and blood and stuff like that. So, so cool. Really, really good game. And another excellent game is Hakuto no Ken, Fist of the North Star Sega Fighter. This was uh, put together by Arc System Works, and it's one of the, it's just a really early, really, really good anime fighter. Uh, this one is sealed. I've got a loose copy. That's what I played. It was like the first game that I played once I modded my PS2. And it, this is another one that I've got to make a video on. This is just one of the most gorgeous anime fighters out there. Really, really terrific find if you can pick this one up. Mobile Light Force. Uh, Mobile Light Force is a pretty decent bullet hell shooter. Uh, I heard about this, I don't know where I heard about this, it's got a horrific cover. I mean, it just, it looks like a bargain basement game and it probably turned out to be, but it's actually a pretty, pretty solid bullet hell uh, shooter from Japan. Very, very, um, pretty challenging and uh, definitely worth seeking out if you like that type of game. The same holds true for Castle of Shikigami. Uh, same deal, uh, top or vertical, top-down shooter, bullet hell style game. Very challenging, and uh, I don't know where I actually found this, but in pretty good shape and a decent game. Automodelista. When I read about this, I was really excited because you know. We had never seen a cell-shaded racing game, but it turned out to just be kind of bland and not very interesting at all. Now, these two games, they're actually one game, two different rosters. This is um, the King of Colosseum 1, and these were 3D adaptations, essentially. Of Fire Pro Wrestling, but they are so difficult. The control system takes time. If you've played Fire Pro, you know that it's, there's no really grappling. There's just sort of timing-based controls, and it didn't. That style didn't really translate into a 3D space. But uh, incredible roster and pretty decent graphics. I remember importing both of these, and I was so pumped to get them because Fire Pro is you know, is and has been such a good series, but put a couple hours into them, so tough, kept on revisiting these games, just wasn't working out. These are very, very, very tough and ultimately inaccessible. Virtua Fighter 4, uh, one of the earlier games that I picked up for the console, and I have to say I didn't really like it um, and kind of put it down but I've recently started playing it again now that I have the X Arcade fight, fighting stick which changes the game tremendously. This is a really really good Virtua Fighter game so much better than 3 not quite as, as good as 5 but in my opinion but you know this was uh, pretty cool because it started that arcade system where you can go and battle a lot of different computer arcade AI opponents and, and sort of fight your way up the Japanese arcade scene, which really, really extended the gameplay. So if you can find this, it's pretty good. Next up is uh, a game that I didn't even know existed until I guess I read, I think, a greatest racing game list somewhere online for the PS2. This is Tourist Trophy. This is a essentially Gran Turismo with bikes. And it's pretty good. It's actually, you know, it's the same courses, I believe, from Gran Turismo 4. It's, uh, you know, it's fun, but ultimately came off as a little bland. One of my favorite games on the system, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. So much, just, there's so much I can say about this. This was one of my favorite games of all time. Um... Just the beginning, where you're in... Uh, of course, Metal Gear Solid is always about 
you know, isolation and being isolated in these incredibly dangerous situations, but just landing in the Soviet swamps and listening for the footsteps of the soldiers out in the distance, and, and it was just so awesome, and it also has my favorite boss of all time. Of course, I'm blanking on his name. He's my favorite of all time. I should have probably looked this up, but anyway, he is the sniper character, and you see him early on in the game just being wheeled around in a wheelchair, and basically it's you know, implied that he's got one last battle left, one last kill, and it's you, and his sort of eyeball juts out of his skull as he looks down the scope, and he's hiding in the trees, and you're running around, you don't know where he is. It is just one of the most tense and awesome boss battles of all time. Just, again, terrific, terrific game. Pick it up, pick it up on the PS Vita. They, they did a... Uh, HD re-release, and I think also on the PS3, so play this game if you haven't played it already. I don't know why I bought this. I guess I wanted to play Bejeweled, and it was like, you know, it was 17, I think I actually paid $17.99, it's a terrible deal, but I think it was like one weekend, and I just wanted to play Bejeweled, and I don't know why I didn't download it to my computer, so I bought this. Big mistake. Red Faction. This game kind of like looked interesting, and I guess back at the time it was a pretty decent FPS game for what the PS2 could put out, but it ultimately is not that great. I uh, played it sort of fairly recently with a friend, and it just, just didn't do it for me. The co-op mode was not great. Sega Genesis Collection, very, very serviceable. Um, not much else I can say about that. It was, it, was, it was a nice attempt at putting together a Sega Genesis Collection. So my games are sort of toppling over here. Uh, Victorious Boxers, the first one. As, as I said, this is the one to play, have a review up on it. Very difficult, almost maddening at times but very, very fun. And a game that was one of my biggest disappointments on the system, Final Fantasy XII, I guess this is the Steelbook edition, it just, just didn't do it for me. I hated that board game, I just, something about Final Fantasy's past nine that just really bugged me and, and just never thought this was very good. And, Played it for three or four hours on the day I got it and haven't picked it up since. And what else do we have here? Ah, GTA Vice City, uh, my favorite version of the game. I really do like GTA 5, but there's just something about the 80s vibe here. It, it is, this game was just a lot of fun and it was. Um, just one of my favorites on the system. Highly recommended. And we're getting to the end of part two here. We've got ATV 2. These games seem to just come out on a rapid clip, but this one was okay. It was actually a pretty fun off-road racer. And lastly, you've got Tekken 5. Tekken 5 I really, really like Tekken 5, almost better than Tekken 6. I just, I thought it was uh, just a terrific looking game, classic Tekken. And, although I think the kind of the best version was the Dark Resurrection on the PS3, which kind of gave the levels in this game the HD treatment. Um, but this was uh, really a lot of fun back on the PS2.